Hey Media Mail Gang, it is Katie with Katie Reads and in this video I am going to go over the top sites that I typically use when I am trying to figure out a book value. Now if you're new to my channel, my name is Katie, I run Katie Reads, I resell used books on Amazon eBay, Macari, and I sell some book crafts, bookmarks, bookish stuff on Etsy. This channel, I also talk about my reading and writing. So I talk about books that I'm reading, books that I'm writing, uh, writing tips, just it's where reselling books and reading just all kind of meet together on this channel. And if you are an existing subscriber to this channel, thanks for coming back. This These types of videos don't do amazing on my channel. They don't get typically a whole lot of views, but I like to share them because I do get a lot of questions in my DMs about websites that I go to to figure out book values. And I think it is an important thing to have out there so that way I have this video already recorded that I can share with other people and those of you that do watch my videos and do like my more like educational content uh, have this information. But first I want to give a really really quick shout out to Cha Ching King. Uh, you can follow him here on Instagram. I'm not sure if he has a YouTube. If he does I will put it in the description of this video. But he was kind enough to share with me a book that he wrote for his wife as well as some of his merch. And right here is the book that he wrote for his wife for their 25th wedding anniversary. And I thought it was really, really sweet. Uh, it's not a very thick book, so it sounds like it's a quick and simple read. So I'm definitely going to be giving it a read and then a review on both my Instagram and my YouTube. I'm going to slowly start getting back into that now that your girl's done with college and I have more time to focus on my business, focus on reading, writing, and doing YouTube content. And shout out to him for this awesome Cha-Ching King merch. I love it. I think I look very good in this color. I think this color suits me. So thank you so much for sending that to me. And if there's something that you want to send me, my PO box is in the description. Please don't feel obligated. I just try to give shout outs every once in a while when viewers take their time and energy and postage <laughs> and pay literally to have something sent to me that literally, I it just means the world to me. I can't believe complete strangers are so supportive and encouraging of what I'm doing. So again, thank you. All right, so now let's get into it. The first website that I always go to when I'm trying to figure out the value of a book is, so let's get into it. The book values that I'm going to be talking about today are going to be your probably tougher values. So you can scan the barcode and Scout IQ and figure out where it is. You can't find comps for it on eBay, or maybe you're struggling to figure out where to go. Like these are going to be the tougher books that you're having a hard time figuring out. So the very first website that I like to reference is Google. <laughs> Especially for foreign language books, Google Translate helps me a lot. I get a lot of antique foreign language books. And so Google Translate helps me figure out what language it's in. And then from there, I can usually reference to the following sites, Abooks and Biblio. Now, Abooks is a free site and Abooks most booksellers know about because a lot of library sales reference a books for value or to justify the value crazy sometimes value <laughs> that they're asking for for books in their book sales a books uh is a selling site and it shows you know a bigger market of booksellers that are selling rare and antiquarian books and even some modern books Biblio is the same kind of site and it shows a lot of different uh, current listings and some sold listings. I reference them very vaguely. I mostly just look at what it's being listed for. I don't necessarily reference a lot of like what it's sold for. Now there is another site uh, that I will mention and it's going to be a soft mention, a soft for number four site because it does require a subscription and unless you're getting a lot of vintage and antiquarian books and you can justify a monthly cost, I would be hesitant to do that. 
I try and focus more on the free resources available to you before you get a subscription, especially if you're only going to be using it a couple times a month. Now myself, I plan on diving really deep into vintage and antiquarian in the future. So eventually that cost will be justified for me, especially because I'm going to be seeking out more volume with that type of book as well. That type of book, you know, genre, the rare and antiquarian books. But Worth Point is another website that you can check out. And there is a subscription involved with that. And the thing I like about Worth Point is you literally can see sales from 2005. Like it, it's crazy the um, vast platforms it shows you and how far back it can go. eBay comps, you can only see so far back. So it will even show some sold eBay, you know, sales from a couple of years ago or 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, it's crazy what they can show you on Worth Point. And I would say number five is definitely going to be your softwares. So your softwares like Terapeak and Keepa and that type of thing, those again are subscriptions. And Terapeak you can actually get through eBay if you have a store and you can sign up for subscription and do all of that. Terapeak I've used a couple times, uh, Keepa I've used a couple times. I would say also to run into that is going to be your Scout IQ software, but it's going to be tough because Amazon isn't a really big market for rare and vintage books. So you could use Scout IQ, but just keep in mind, like Amazon isn't really the market for that. Is it possible? Yes. There are rare and antique books on Amazon. Yes, absolutely. Um, but it's not the collector's market, I guess. That's not where a lot of collectors would be going. So number five, I'll kind of combine all those softwares together because they're not definitely not my go-to. And then finally, number six, the resource that I personally like as well is your network and social media. <laughs> so your network of booksellers, people you need, if you're going to be getting into books, you need to be following on YouTube, following on Instagram, making friendships with people that sell books, uh, either internationally or domestically or, you know, wherever you are in the world, you do need to be having and developing a network of people that sell books as well. And so Steve Eisenstein is a really known uh, vintage and antiquarian bookseller. He did it back in the day when you had to do a newspaper listing for books and took money orders and, you know, the old school uh, book market sales. And he has a big wealth of knowledge. He did an interview with Caleb Roth, who is the creator of Scout IQ, who I have a lot of respect for and is very knowledgeable about books as well. And so I'll put the YouTube interview in the description of this video as well because Steve goes over a lot of other things as well as far as rare and antique books but Steve also mentions his weekly radio show and then he also has a Facebook group and every now and then he will go live in that Facebook group and do a Q&A with people but in that Facebook group is a lot of other knowledgeable people that have a lot of other websites that they use as resources. So you'll just continue to find more and more resources as time goes on. But for me personally, these are my six that I kind of use for rare and vintage books. Um, my top one being Google is just because Google will show me so many different sites. Um, and I, I like that. And the same thing with like having something like Worth Point you know, that shows you a lot of different platforms where sales happened. So those are just really important things to kind of keep in mind uh, with the resources that you're using. Sometimes it's nice to have something niche down, but then it's also nice to have like a really broad picture too, because you kind of have to have both to compare and contrast and figure out how you want to list this because you want to first make sure you can sell the item. And then second, you want to get an accurate value. You don't want to undersell or overprice. And, you know, third, you want to make sure that there's even, you know, a decent market for it. So I guess that would be my final ending to this video is just please remember that sometimes with rare vintage antiquarian books, um, 
you may think that there's this huge value for them and they might have been rare at one time, but maybe the market's just either fizzled out for it or maybe it's not heavily sought after anymore or the value just isn't there that was there maybe five or ten years ago. So just things to kind of keep in mind with books, they fluctuate just like any other product like toys and clothing and everything else. Market is defined by consumers and consumers are average people just like you and me. And I go through buying phases and moods. I'm sure you do too. So book collectors are gonna be the same way. You know, they're gonna buy certain things that maybe five years from now, they have no more interest in as far as having on their bookshelves. So I hope this video helped some of you. And really, I just wanted it to kind of have in the catalog of my eBay book selling playlist. So that way I could give it to people because it does give a rundown of some resources that I personally use as far as websites. And also in that playlist is a detailed breakdown of conditioning, first editions, things like that. I also recommend if you're trying to figure out first editions, please Google it because there will be images and you can compare your book with the images that are in Google. Um, I'm not a wizard. I'm not anyone special. So if you want to send me a DM about your book, I will help in the best way that I can. However, I'm going to be using the same resources that you'd be using as well. Um, eventually I'd like to get certified and be able to do formal appraisals on antiquarian books, but I'm not there yet. That will be later on down the road after baby comes and all of that. So, uh, we'll see what the future holds. I hope this video helped you and please let me know if there's other types of educational content that you're interested in. This channel focuses heavily on eBay, not so much Amazon. So if you have a lot of Amazon questions, you can still definitely DM me or leave a comment. Uh, but I don't drop a whole lot of Amazon content on this channel because there's so many other people doing Amazon content. Uh, and you can find a lot, you know, in the YouTube search um, for sure with Amazon. So yeah, I guess I'm kind of rambling now. So this video is done. I appreciate you guys watching and giving me feedback on educational content that you'd like to see regarding books. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. See ya.